Right, uh, <clears throat> God blimey, governor. A bit late starting today, so we're just going to jump straight into it. Making a, uh, well, this is not going to be a tutorial as such. It's just a hangout streaming, making a clothes, <clears throat> excuse me. Making a clothing item for INVU using the alternative clothing file that is now available. which I will link to. So essentially this file came as a result of a problem that occurred making the skirt tutorial, which is, this is for IMVU, obviously or maybe not, making the skirt tutorial because clothing items we just basically have, let's just open the open sesame so we have the, the avatar, we have the avatar skeleton which is what controls the meshes that we see when we look at an avatar and we have the meshes so one of the problems that we have as clothing makers is that this is the pose that we use for making our clothing. So when clothing items are constructed, we make them using the avatar bleh, around the mesh. And then we try haphazardly to articulate the skeleton, which we can do in this particular instance, grab the wrist bone. We can do some haphazard articulation of the skeleton to check whether the clothing item deforms with the mesh or with the skeleton. But the problem with that is that none of that matches up to what IMVU does in IMVU. IMVU does its own thing because the skeleton because they Oh, clothing file. Uh, so let's just do empty derivable. Empty derivable. So that's the avatars one of default poses. And for clothing makers, that is a real problem when we test the avatar because what we have to do is basically make the clothing item, item, item export, import into IMVU and test it, particularly in the seated pose. The standing poses don't necessarily cause too much of a problem, but the seated pose, oh, this, this is one of the killer poses this when the, the avatar crosses its legs but for for clothing creation the problem is is that that pose we discussed this in some previous videos but we'll do it for the sake of just completeness that pose can be made using several bones so the avatar crossing its legs can actually be done or should have actually been done using one, two, three bones, well, four and five for left and right. But the way that I'm for you have animated their avatars, that whatever the leg does, they just use the thigh bone. So they treat the thigh bone, which really should only rotate on the vertical axis well the z-axis it should only rotate what we should be using is the hip bone that's the one that generally acts as that rotational axis that allows us to kick the leg forward or backwards but the way that i for you do their animations they don't do that they use the thigh bone so of course that means for your clothing items in particular it causes a problem 
because you can weight paint your items to your blue in the face and get it all set up to all of this but these bones aren't used this one is and this one is and that's why whenever you uh, whenever you test your clothing the butt tends to poke out at the back it's because that section of the mesh is being controlled by the thigh bone it's not the hip bone so the alternative clothing file doesn't fix this all it does is it gives a set of poses that replicate where is it that replicate the seated pose of the avatar in IMVU let's close that because the computer is heating up and that so the poses replicate what IMVU is doing and it's just approximate because reasons but it gives you an idea of how your clothing item might deform which then means that you can check for and adjust your weight paint values especially on the the pelvis and the hips to accommodate skeleton and the poses created again because IMVU didn't animate their avatars in a way that's well it would have been a better option had they done it a different way it would have been better for content creation but they chose not to do that so you know that's dead in the water now it's, it's long gone so this is just that's what the clothing item uh, <clears throat> the clothing the alternative clothing file is so always create your clothing item in the t pose so this is the same as the standard clothing file which is somewhere which is that one which differs because it literally just doesn't have any pose data associated with it I think there's just a T pose dope sheet action editor yes yeah, just a T pose so reopen that just going to make uh, a clothing item that just if you watch the uh, what would it have been one of the Christmas streams where we made the ribbon wrap the ribbon wrap that went round the body we're going to do something similar but make it a a, thi a th bigger piece of fabric but it's still a clothing item and it will still need to be weight painted to the skeleton across multiple bones so let's just add a plane down at the feet and then position that up by the shoulders whoops So that's our starting object. Literally just that. Oh, I need to put the. So if you want to learn about creating stuff for IMVU, go here. And the starter files are. Where are the starter files? Let's 
starter files are here, including both the alternative post file and the alternative clothing file, which we're using now. So, right, so that's our starting point. And all we're going to do is toggle into edit mode. So we can either use the um, context or mode editor selector or press the tab key shortcut, switch to uh, edge mode. So that's numbers one, vertex, number pad, uh, not number pad, your main numbers on your keyboard, uh, one vertex, two edge, and three for faces. So get used to those. It'll save you a lot of time. What we're going to do is grab an edge and extrude it. So we can either use the extrude tool which gives us this, or deactivate that. We just press the E key, E for echo. And all we're going to do is just extrude this around the body. And just do some rough positioning. So we're using the shortcut keys, R for rotate, G to grab. Don't need to use scale just yet. And then of course, E to extrude. So that'll do for that, and then. So do we want this to? So what we could do with this is just extrude. Whoops! Just extrude that down the back. Maybe longer. Right, and just now do some basic positioning. So we want to essentially change the orientation of the edges so that we are defining our edge flow and the basic flow of the object. So that's our basic shape. Let's save this. Save as. Clothing wrap one. Save as. So now what we can do is use the scale as a scale widget or just press the S key, S for sugar. What we want to do is just, whoops, change the size of some of this, scale it upwards.
And as we've been discussing over all the videos and the tutorials and the streams, always start with just basic structure. Get that into place and then add more detail as needed. So this bit is on the floor. Let's change this. So of course this is the female avatar, but it's it's the same process on the male avatar. Oops, wrong key. Let's save that version. Save as. So what did we have before? That versus. So this is obviously why. Uh, well, why? It's a good idea to do version saving because you can try different iterations of something. Stop, save the file, and then continue so that you have different versions or uh, 
iterations to go back to. Okay, so let's work with this. Alright, so we need to put some, just some loop cuts. So that's control R, R for Roger. That's a shortcut key, or you can use the toolbar. Click. Click. And click. So we just want this back section just to be inside these loops. work with this. Alright, switching to vertex mode. Just going to start grabbing vertices and pulling a shape out of this. So we're just trying to follow the general contours of the torso. So we need a loop cut here. Let's get that sorted out relative to the front.
So already we are starting to get our wrap. Let's extrude this. So we can come back to that later. Whoops, what did we do? So we also have to be mindful that for things like this, we've got to be careful how we design or how we structure the mesh at the shoulders because the, the avatar doesn't stand in this T pose, obviously, when it's in use. So we have to be mindful that once this mesh is built and it's, it's weight painted, what we have to be careful of is that if we weight paint this section of the mesh to the, uh, that's a bicep, I think that's the bicep bone. If we weight paint it, depending on how that, that's done, when the avatar stands in its pose and its arms are down by its side, this section of the mesh might deform quite hard and follow the arm down. So this section would be uh, down here somewhere which would cause this entire top section to stretch quite significantly. So all of that would be stretched and elongated so that it was probably something like that. So almost double the length. So we have to be mindful when creating clothing of overextending the mesh or over distorting the mesh. So keep an eye out for things like that. Right, so... Loop cut here. A loop cut here. Right, so loop cut here. So now we can start adding a few more loop cuts and just rounding off the shape 
So we're not positioning the loop cuts anywhere in particular, we're just adding them and letting them fall in the center. So that's control R to get the loop cut loop cut uh, widget and then mousing over an edge. So a uh, horiz yeah, horizontal for a vertical cut and a vertical for a horizontal cut. Let's drop that in place. Oops. This one we've got to be that's a tricky one because we've got quite a bit of significant mesh distortion. So we need to, now that we've got more loops, what we want to do is start selecting them as loop continuous uh, selections. Shortcut keys for that are the Alt key and right click, depending on how you've got your mass set up. I'm assuming you have right click set up as your selection. If not, it's a bit tricky with left click, uh, but Alt, right click and it selects the loop so the loop is that continuous edge alternatively what we can do is select well it'll be two vertexes so that we can then do where is it select loop edge loops and it'll select Let's do that in wireframe to make that easy to see. So we select the two vertex because if we select the one vertex on the edge, not quite sure if it knows which. No, it doesn't know which edge loop to select. So it doesn't know whether it wants this edge loop selected or this edge loop selected. So if you're in a vertex mode, you have to select at least two vertices. So there is an edge which highlights an orientation, essentially. So the selection will just continue along this edge. Whereas if we had selected these two vertexes, it should continue along this edge and back up that way. like so. Whereas what we want is this. Oops. Switch to the universal widget tool. And to make this easier, what we can do is switch from global to a local orientation. And that changes the orientation of the widget. So I don't know how clear this is. Let's move that to one side so we can see the menu. So we can see how the widget changes its orientation depending on whether it's local, global, normal. That just basically means that we are 
moving the selection in relation to the selection itself instead of the grid but that can mean the axis goes a little wonky Save that. So we just want to start adding a few more loop cuts. We don't yet want to be doing a loop cut along the length. We just want to go across the width or yes, the width. can also start doing is putting in making a start of putting in what look like clothing folds or cloth fold folds of the cloth and we can do that all we're doing is just creating a a concave concave shape So if you imagine the flow of the cloth, so we're just dipping in, because what we can do later on is add a bit more detail to that, and we have a cloth fold. But we don't have to go too crazy right now.
So we need to accommodate the butt. So let's hide the meshes for the moment. Whoops. That's why. That should be. Pelvis. I have to adjust that. That's not too much of an issue. That's named that because that's where the file. Uh, so let me just correct that actually. I need to update the alternative clothing file because that's. That should be called female.nakedpelvis. Copy that. Double click pace. I think that's still just a remnant remnant of uh, the file that was being used to actually create the alternative uh, closing file.
Right, so let's add a couple of loops. Just to soften that out a little bit. Absolutely no idea how this is being held up, but who cares? It's probably some safety pins somewhere. So, one of the things with clothing, I often need to be able to see inside the mesh, and of course the avatar is in the way. So this is where the outliner, which is this top right view or editor, we can use that to show and hide various elements of the project. So it's set up essentially so that our, well, this is optional, but the, the object, whoops, go away. The object that we're editing is plain, and that just happens to be in dress. In a collection, these now replace layers, but in this collection, that's where our mesh is. But we've also got a skeletal selection, a skeletal collection, and a mesh collection. And the mesh is, is where all the avatar stuff is. So we can hide everything by just clicking the little checkbox. And it's the same for all the collections. So basically you are hiding the entire collection. Yoink. If you want to hide specific elements within the collection, what you use are these little eyeballs. Just click on those Whoops, that's the wrong one, that hides the entire collection. Just click on those and it hides the relevant object. Whoops. So this is useful for clothing because it means that you can just quickly hide the whole lot without because with the older versions of Blender, uh, you have to do all the shift click to toggle the layers. So the layers buttons would all be down here somewhere. And you'd have to shift click each of them to hide the bits that you wanted to get rid of. So do we have inside the mesh. No, we need a loop cut in here. one here so we are loosely following so we've got our edge that loops around goes behind this and then in front and then loops back round so we've just added a loop cut that loosely matches this section so that we can deform the mesh to sort of 
broadly speaking, match that structure. So if we change this at some point, we also have matching structure behind it that we can also change. So that's that loop, or one of them. We've got to watch out because we don't want to intersect the butt. We don't want to be too close to the back side of the avatar when we're... Uh, well, it doesn't matter too much at this point, but we don't want to be too close to it generally because the butt deforms quite heavily with Ironview's avatars. So we want to and it deforms quite heavily at the bottom of the bottom. Wireframe. So most of the problem that occurs with the deformation of the mesh, this is whether you're making shorts, trousers, skirts, doesn't matter whatever it is don't have these problems so much with the tops but these two areas are pretty low resolution relative to the amount of structural stretching that occurs so in the same way that we were talking about watching out for the clothing item at the shoulder we have to watch out for extreme stretching because this vertex is associated with this part of the arm which when it's down by the side may mean that these two parts are down here somewhere. The back side of the avatar suffers the same problem. They didn't provide enough structure underneath or in this section. On both sides they didn't provide enough structure. So there's quite a significant amount of stretching that goes on depending on what the pose is. And that can cause the mesh to spike because the deformation is quite hard and that is why you get the intersection and trying to match that is actually quite tricky that's why the alternative poses were provided because it allows let's do uh let's see no We can see how it starts to spike. We get very angular deformation of the mesh depending on the seat pose because it's being pulled under the avatar and this is the other one that causes the problem. Because we end up with this very flat plane that has this very hard deformation. So if you don't watch out for that with your clothing items, you'll get caught out by it. And it's the same with this section at the top. So we've got a lot of very hard deformation because there isn't enough structure in the mesh and because they've used just that single bone to rotate the entire section. So we've got to watch out for that sort of stuff. Well, I think we're coming up to the hour. So we'll call it quits there for today and continue with this. on the next stream. Uh, and then maybe still need to do the additional textures for the 
let's just save this. Save as number four. So we'll call that quits for for this part of the project. So that's what we've got so far. And we'll continue with that on the next stream. But save that. We need to in another another stream. We need to create let's just get rid of all the room mesh stuff, furniture nodes, and seating. So we need to We need to create the normal maps and specular maps for this room so that we can see what it looks like in Studio Beta. So at the moment all we've got are basically the standard default flat textures for IMVU. But with the addition of normal maps and specular maps, which we've looked at before, we can get this into Studio Beta and take advantage of some of the material features, at least, that that offers. So those will take a while to do, but I may do because it'll be important to know about for creators going forward. We need to know how to make these assets. So may do some streams on making normal maps and spec uh, shininess maps. So if you don't know what those are, let's just have a quick look see. Hopefully I don't need to log in. Yes, I do. Right, do... Uh... No, I'll have to do that another time. We'll do that another time. But basically, whoops. We need to create... Uh, we need to go through the process of making some normal maps. And it can be done from textures. But it has to be done in a, a particular way so that they work properly. Because it's not just a question of uh, using a converter, as is often the case. If they're done with a little bit of consideration for what they are, we'll get some decent results. So we'll be doing that for another, another couple of streams. But the room, the room stream itself. Of the um, the process that you, you know, I wouldn't call it a tutorial because it's eight hours eight hours plus of video streaming, but that is done, and these would be separate. Where's oh there it is. These will be separate. These will be separate videos, just talking about normal maps and shininess maps and how we can make them. But for now, where's the... So that's our clothing wrap. We'll call it quits there. And uh, we shall see you on the next stream. So thanks for lurking, lurkers. Oh, and by the way, the channel, and I'm still puzzled as to how this is happening channel is coming up to nearly three quarters of a million three quarters of a million m with an m million with an m views which is huge uh, and that's that's more than a lot of prominent channels so 
no idea how that's happening but that's a lot of views uh, so do the usual thing of subscribing following clicking the buttons and all that sort of stuff so that you get notified of these videos when they go up and um, yeah very weird anyway so we shall see you on the next stream thanks for lurking lurkers bye for now